Did a Russian submarine threaten a Norwegian anti-submarine aircraft with manned portable air defenses? Now, a few people connected with me on Twitter and asked me if this video was real. I'm going to put the full video in the pinned comments and description below. Now to start. I'm kind of like Tom Clancy in reverse. I know a lot about anti-armor and some air warfare, but I tend to stay away from naval topics. So if I get anything wrong, please let me know in the comments, which I know you're going to do anyway. But logic is still logic and science is still science. So I've got that going for me, which is nice. So let me break this down for you. This Russian Bori class ballistic missile submarine Prince Vladimir was on patrol in the Barents Sea with a media crew. They were on the surface when a Norwegian P-3 Orion, which is probably from the 333 SKV or Saints squadron, appeared and dropped a sono buoy near the submarine. A sonar buoy is a disposable sonar sensor that planes or helicopters can drop, and this transmits sonar information to the air platform. If this was wartime, the plane can then detect the submarine and drop a torpedo. But in peacetime, sonar buoys could be used to build an electronic profile or an acoustic fingerprint of the submarine. Now, Russian media claimed that the submarine took action by activating a team that carried shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles, or man pads, up to the sail of the submarine. Now this is possible. What's interesting is that many navies have experimented with putting anti-aircraft missiles on submarines. Britain experimented by putting blowpipe man pads on submarines, but you have to wonder if it's tactically viable. The whole point of a submarine is not to be spotted, so why carry extra stuff in a vehicle where space is already at a premium? What might make sense for a diesel-electric submarine like a Russian Kilo or a Lada class to carry these weapons. Some submarines like the Prince Vladimir are nuclear-powered. They can stay underwater for months at a time, making their own air and drinkable water. Diesel-electric submarines use a technology from World War II where they use diesel engines on the surface to charge batteries that keep them moving underwater, kind of like an underwater Prius. It makes sense that diesel-electric submarines might have a man-pad system on board because they have to surface to charge their batteries. In fact, there's a picture of a Russian Federation sailor with a training unit on a Kilo-class diesel-electric submarine. Here's where things get weird. If you look at the video, the flagpole for the Russian Navy ensign is on the starboard or right side near the bow. By the way, this is an ensign. This is a jack. I don't know why the Navy needs two flags, but I'm sure it goes back to the 1700s and is really historical. And I'm sure someone's going to let me know in the comments. This flagpole matches where the Bory class submarine should keep its ensign. In the picture with the man pads, the ensign suddenly moves. Now it's on the port or the left side. And this picture seems in line with what the Lada class submarine should have on its sail. Also note the flagpole cleat, the halyard or rope that lets the flag up and down is wrapped around the cleat and tied differently in each picture. I think the footage from the Norwegian P-3 Orion is real, but the news agency spliced in a different submarine when they wanted to show the man pads. This is kind of how Russian propaganda works. It counts on your ignorance about how military equipment is used in order to further a political agenda. Final things. Do you know the pilot of the Norwegian 333 Squadron P-3 Orion that found this submarine? Let me know. I'll uh, send him a Ryan Macbeth challenge coin for the good work he did finding this submarine. And by the way, if you like the t-shirt, they should be available at Bunker Branding today. I'll put the link in the description below when it goes live. Thank you for watching.